so we're going to start in this video by looking at um, revenue and the revenue that the firm receive um, is simply the amount of money that they get by selling all the quantity they've produced and multiplying it by the price okay um, in building up your model of the behavior of firms in the theory of the firm section of microeconomics you've got to look at total average and marginal revenue okay so if you remember from first year in any particular market you've got a demand curve you've got the price and you've got the quantity now we're looking at um, the total revenue that is earned in that marketplace uh, and the total revenue is simply the price per good times the quantity sold so this price here if that was say five pounds quantity was say a hundred you'd be saying your total revenue is um, that box there and this is exactly the same when it comes to the th individual firm so the individual firm is faced with a demand curve okay and so the total revenue is the price that they get per unit times the quantity price times quantity that box there is how you work out the total revenue once you've decided that the firm are going to produce that to Q naught and we'll look at that later um, in terms of profit maximizing levels of output etc um, but we also need to be able to work out the average revenue now given that the average revenue is simply the total revenue divided by the quantity so that gives you the average revenue for one product and total revenue is P times Q, then really what you can do is you can cross out the two Qs and average revenue is always equal to the price. In other words, the price of the good per unit is the average revenue. It's the total divided by your quantity. Now, the average revenue curve then is this demand curve because what this demand curve is showing you is how much is demanded at each and every price so this price at this quantity that much is demanded at that price and so saying price you can say at that average revenue so you can read the demand curve as the average revenue curve and on the axis here what you should really now be putting is that this is the average revenue which is equal to the price which then gives this as a quantity that is being demanded so the average revenue curve becomes the um, demand curve and on this diagram therefore you can measure average revenue here as a as a figure and then the area of that box is the total revenue last thing we need to look at though is the marginal revenue and this is much more complicated so I set out a table here which hopefully um, is self-explanatory we would always talk about a downward sloping demand curve which is a straight line and because of that every time you increase your quantity by 20 in this case I have to drop my price by 2 and that will give us a straight line if I then multiply the quantity by the price I get the total revenue so this box here is the total revenue the marginal revenue is defined as the extra revenue you get from selling one more good okay so in this instance we're selling 20 more each time so we would have to take the extra revenue from 20 and divide it by 20 so let's take an example here so between price point 10 and price point 8 we've had an increase in our total revenue of 120 so 120 increase but that is what we get from selling 20 more goods so when we divide 20 into 120 I get the average revenue so the marginal revenue of one more good is six pounds and it's a positive six pounds as well you'll see that it's um, negative later on in the table as total revenue starts to go down so the formula for the marginal revenue is the change in total revenue divided by the change in quantity if if the table that you are given in a multi-choice question is one two three four then obviously um, you don't need to divide by that 20 so it's the change in total divided by the change in the quantity so what does that look like well here is a uh, graph of the average revenue curve the demand curve and this is derived from this table which we have looked at just now so it's the quantities goes up by 20 each time so from 0 to 20 to 40 to 60 
And what we're looking for is what it is between, what is the extra revenue when I go from 0 to 20, i.e. between these two numbers, which is why um, I'm looking at points between these numbers. Okay, so the first one is point A, and you can see that point A is um, a marginal revenue of 10. Point B is a marginal revenue of 6. Point C is a marginal revenue of 2, and then it goes down below the line, so it's a negative marginal revenue. So at any quantity, when we draw this line in, which we'll draw in now, at any quantity, let's take 40, I could come up and I could mar measure the marginal revenue that I get at that quantity and the total revenue, uh, sorry, the average revenue that I get at that quantity. Now, we'll see in the next slide, once I've got the average revenue and the quantity, I could draw the box in and I could find the total revenue. Okay, so this is what we're going to see here, is that you don't have to necessarily do that because I'm going to now look at the idea that the total revenue can also be considered as a separate axis. Now, why I put it on a separate axis is that you'll see the total revenue has, you know, at, at its peak is £360, and the price at its peak is only £12. So if we put those on the same axis, um, what these curves wouldn't really show. So how can I draw the total revenue? So I can get the average, I can get the marginal, can I get the total? Well, what you need to think about is, is this. That is the shape of the total revenue curve, okay? And we're just going to explain that now. This basically, this point here, the first point on it, is basically saying, look, you know, if, if the price is up here on my demand curve, here's my demand curve, if this is the price and you hit the axis with these curves, um, therefore I'm not going to sell any. If I don't sell any, it doesn't matter what that price is, my total revenue is going to be zero. If I drop the price, I bring my price down, I move, there's an extension along the demand curve until I have zero price here, then the total revenue is going to be zero. So the total revenue always starts um, where the demand curve hits the axis and then it always um, ends up back where the demand curve hits um, the quantity axis. So those are your starting points and finishing points. Then you've got to think, well, what is happening here to total revenue? Well, as I increase the output of the firm from 0 to 20 to 40, my marginal revenue is, is quite high to start with, at £10 for each one. So the growth of the total revenue is going to be quite strong. So that's quite a steep line. However, as I keep going here, the extra revenue I'm getting is much, much smaller. So the total revenue curve goes up. It's always going up because total revenue is rising up to this point, but it's rising at a decreasing rate. Then you hit this point here, which is the peak of total revenue, and that is going to coincide with where the marginal revenue cuts the axis. After that, as we add more and more of um, a quantity, the marginal revenue is negative, which means that it's bringing the total revenue down now. So it only brings it down by a small amount here, but as you keep going on, the rate of decrease is getting bigger. So that is how you would draw your um, average revenue, marginal revenue, and total revenue curves on um, the same diagram if you needed to. You won't ever have to do that in an essay, um, but sometimes I've seen that in multiple choice work. So the only other thing that we therefore look at in this section of the course is, well, what is happening to the elasticity of demand along that demand curve? So I need to take you back to a recap of AS material. And if you remember, we we would look at a price, we look at a typical demand curve here, and we would say, well, what's the effect of this price falling? So from 4p to 3p, well, it increases the um, demand from 1,000 to, say, 1,500. Now, the total revenue, as I say, is the area under that curve at that point, and it's the area under the curve at that point. Okay, So this box here, this that box there, 
that is a, um, a box that you find in both of those total revenues. So I'm only concerned now about this one and this one. So this box here says I'm losing a penny on that first 1,000. Because I've dropped the price from four to three, I lose a penny on those first 1,000 goods that I was selling at the 4p. Okay, So the revenue falls by a penny on the original 1,000 goods, I, I lose a thousand pence but there's a gain box as well and that's saying that because I've dropped the price I've increased the demand by 500 and I'm getting 3p for that so I'm gaining 1500 so the revenue is gained at a new price and what you should be able to see now is that the gain box is bigger than the loss box okay now that's just using numbers so can we do it by just looking at two different demand codes, an elastic and an inelastic? And the answer is yes. If you look at the elastic one, when we drop the price, we don't lose very much. That's a small box, um, but I gain a huge amount. So by reducing price and increasing quantity, when we have elastic demand, then my total revenue has gone up. Okay, whereas with the inelastic demand, I drop the price, I make this loss box, I only get a small gain and so the total revenue will fall. So the relationship between the PED and price and quantity and, and total revenue then is simply that when you drop the price, when you have elastic, total revenue will rise. If you have inelastic, your total revenue falls. So can we take that into this example and have a look at it? Well, let's say we're going to drop our price here at this point, we're going to increase our quantity, so the marginal revenue is positive. So therefore, over this range here, whenever marginal revenue is positive, as I drop my price and increase the quantity, therefore, this range, the marginal revenue is positive. So I'm dropping the price, marginal revenue is positive. PED over this whole range must be elastic. On the other hand, when I drop my price further, so I move now from here, down to here, down to here, down to here. I'm going to find that marginal revenue is negative, so the total revenue is going to fall. So over this range, your marginal revenue is negative, and so PED is inelastic. So overall, we would find that the average revenue in a straight line demand curve has elastic demand here and inelastic demand at that point there and in the middle here it would be unitary elasticity when total revenue is um, peaking as it were so hopefully that helps you with how the elasticity moves along a demand curve and changes and also how the the three different revenue diagrams you need you need to be able to work out total revenue average revenue and marginal revenue